One of my favorite quotes is from Pablo Picasso. It's uh, something like, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. And I think about that quote all the time when I'm making music. I feel like if I'm not pushing the envelope or breaking the rules or bending the rules just a little bit, then I'm either bored with what I'm creating or I feel like the people that I'm going to be sharing this music with are going to be bored. And uh, that's that's really what it comes down to for me. I feel like everybody needs something that they're doing for themselves, even if they are making music for other people, uh, like for sync, like I do a lot, or you know whether you're just trying to um, write music for your fan base or whatever. Um, so for me, this quote is the one that I most identify with and I kind of carry with me no matter what music I'm making and, and who I'm making it for. So um, I'm going to share three rules for sync and how I go about bending them or breaking them or taking them out of context to to make them more interesting, Right. So one of the first rules that you often hear for sync is don't use nouns. Don't use person, place, or thing names, right? And so one of the themes that you're going to see as I go through these rules is don't do this unless you mean to. And that's the key part of it. Like, if you're going to break the rule, make it obvious that you're breaking the rule. Do it on purpose, right? So... Uh, an example here of like, don't use nouns, don't use a person's name, right? It makes sense in general for sync that you don't want to be singing about some person named Tim because like, you know, it's, if the characters on the screen, if they're using it for, for a film and none of the characters are named Tim, then, then where's this, you know, why are you singing about this person? And if these people are named Tim, then it ends up being too kind of on the nose and the song is just feels weird anyway, right? Um, so what you could do instead to kind of bend this rule a little bit is what if you wrote uh, a song and used non-traditional names, but you wrote it as if that word is a name. So you could say like, you know, like I could imagine like a blues rock song or something, you know, like a gritty blues song where they say, you know, my name is Trouble. Right. So it's like it's kind of a nickname or they call me sin, you know, and then it's kind of like a metaphor for this other thing. And you're not really focusing on what the name is of the character, even though, you know, you could get away with with doing something like that. I think that could be kind of fun to write a song like that. Um, uh, a second sync rule is don't use he or she pronouns. Right. Um, because that kind of divides up the the um, opportunities that you have to sync that song. So if you're writing a song and it's all about like she this and she that, then that's going to mean that those sync opportunities have to be for a female perspective of whatever, you know. Um, it can't be for a male uh, character on, a, on the screen or in an ad or whatever. So those are generally good rules, you know, if you're trying to um, maximize the opportunities for your song. But, you know, one of the most common uh, sync requests is are those like uh, those female empowerment songs or, you know, um, there, there's a bunch of other ones, but, you know, female empowerment is is a big one. And in those cases, you really want to lean into the the she and the female and the, the feminine aspects of of the language that you're using in the song. So those are situations where, like, if you hear that rule of, you know, someone on a panel saying, you know, don't use nouns and don't use he or she and all these other things, it's like, yes, but unless I want to, then you can, you know? And as long as you do it well, then that's all that matters. Uh, the last rule that I'm going to share with you is uh, don't use cheap-sounding instruments, right? We hear that all the time. Don't, don't use cheap-sounding virtual instruments. Don't your MIDI sounds dated or it sounds cheap or whatever. You need to update your, your sounds. Again, that's true unless you are doing something on purpose, right? So if you listen to uh, the Postal Service and you there's a couple of songs where they use string pads um, 
in the back of their songs. If you listen to those, those strings don't sound great. Like, if you just took them out and tried to make, like, an orchestral string arrangement using those string sounds, it would sound horrible. But the whole thing about Postal Service is that they used... Um, in I, I heard an interview with the one half of Postal Service, and they used the just one, I think it was a Yamaha keyboard, for all the sounds on those albums. Um, and so it totally works because they're, they're playing off of the fact that things sound very lo-fi in that, in that style of production, right? Um, if you listen to the band Cake, man, pretty much any song, if you listen to the guitars, the guitar sounds so bad. And I think, like, I've, again, I've heard in an interview where they purposely use, like, a super cheap guitar that barely stays in tune. It's just part of the sound, right? Um, if you listen to uh, Boniver's uh, Skinny Love, the guitar on that sounds horrible. It's, like, out of tune. The vocals, he's a great singer, but the vocals are, like, doubled and tripled, and they kind of clash in places. But it's kind of, like, part of that sound, and he's doing it on purpose. He's not trying to to write, like, a Celine Dion monster ballad and using, like, a crappy guitar and vocals that are doubled and kind of out of tune in in parts um he's doing this particular thing and he's meaning to do it and is on purpose and that's kind of what makes it interesting right so that's kind of what i want to leave you with for this week is if you're going to break the rules know why you're breaking them and and do it on purpose do it with purpose run, run, run off the truth.